The Bride of Frankenstein by Edward Field. Baron has decided to mate the monster. To breed him, perhaps, in the interests of pure science. His only god. So he goes up into his laboratory, which he has built in the tower of the castle, to be as near the interplanetary forces as possible, and puts together the prettiest monster woman you ever saw, with a body like a pinup girl. And hardly any stitching at all where he sewed on the head of a raped and murdered beauty queen, he sets his liquids burping and coils blinking and buzzing, and waits for an electric storm to send through the equipment a spark vital for life. The storm breaks over the castle, and the equipment really goes crazy, like a kitchen full of modern appliances, as the lightning juice starts oozing right into the pretty corpse. He goes to get the monster. So he will be right there when she opens her eyes, for she might fall in love with the first thing she sees as ducklings do. That monster is already straining at his chains and slurping, ready to go right to it. He has been well prepared for coupling by his pinching leading keeper, who's been saying for weeks you're going to get a little nooky, kid. Or how do you go for some boomtang, baby? All the evening and him is focused on this one thing now, as he is led into her very presence. She awakens slowly, she bats her eyes. She gets up out of her equipment, and finally she stands in all her seamed glory, a monster princess with a hairdo like a fright wig. Lightning flashing in the background like a halo in a wedding veil. Like a photographer snapping pictures of a great moment, she stands and stares with her electric eyes, beginning to understand that in this life, too, she was just another body to be raped. The monster is ready to go. He roars with joy at the sight of her. So they let him loose, and he goes right for her knuckers, and she starts uh, screaming to break your heart, and you realize that she was just born in spite of her big tits. She was just a baby, but her instincts are right. Rather death than that green slobber. She jumps off the parapet, and then the monster sex drive goes wild, thwarted it turns to violence, demonstrating sublimation cruelty. And he wrecks the lab, those burping acids and burning coils, overturning the control panel so the equipment goes off like a bomb, the stone castle crumbling and crashing in the storm, destroying them all, perhaps. Perhaps somehow the Baron got out of that wreckage of his dreams with his evil intact. If not, his good looks and more wicked than ever went on with his thrilling career. And perhaps even the monster lived to roam the earth, his desire still ungratified, and lovers out walking in shadowy and deserted places will see his shape loom up over them. Their doom and children sleeping in their beds will wake up in the dark night screaming as his hideous body grabs them. <laughs> Mm-hmm.